us. Come on, you ready to worship Jesus? Here we go.
give you everything this morning, God. We invite your presence here, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We give it all to you. This is a awesome worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your name. This is, this is a house of are full of faith you have our full attention you have the final say every voice we sing come alive so come alive in the name of Jesus come alive in the name
Come on, one more time. We sing. for a moment I just think those words are so powerful that we bring everything to the feet of Jesus we bring it to Jesus I shared this uh, earlier today I, I had a conversation with somebody not too long ago we were praying together and and I just I just asked this question I said hey have you ever just like really surrendered to Jesus like just given him everything just let him have control. And they said, well, I thought I did. In fact, there's a few times I thought I did, and then it just seems like everything gets overwhelming again. And so I guess I didn't. I guess it wasn't real. And I said, or maybe, you know what I do sometimes, is I give it to him, and then I take it back. It's not that it wasn't real. It's that I can kind of be a little bit of a control freak with my problems. Come on, anybody else in the room? And so we just, we like, here, God, take it. I need, I need relief. I need you to come and do a miracle. I need you to work in my life. And then, and then if he doesn't do it just the way we thought or in the timing that we thought, then we kind of put our hands in it, right? And we start trying to mess with it. We start trying to fix it ourselves. And how many know you're not as good of a fixer as God is? Anybody, right? Like he's, he's better at it than you. And so I just wonder this morning how many of us have come to church today and if you were really honest, like if everybody could see what's really happening in your heart and in your mind this morning, we would find that there's some things that you, you tried to surrender it, you tried to let go of it, you brought it to Jesus, or maybe you didn't, maybe you never have, but you find yourself this morning carrying a burden that just feels like it's too much. It's too heavy to carry. You know why? Because it is too heavy. One of the most misquoted, misunderstood things in the Christian universe is the idea that God will not give you more than you can handle. That's not true. It's not true. The Bible does not say that anywhere. What it does say is that you'll never have more than he can handle. Come on, somebody. You'll never have more than he can handle. I wish I could tell you that following Jesus means you'll never suffer. It doesn't mean that. But it does mean you'll never have to suffer alone. You'll never have to walk through it by yourself. And I just want to take a minute this morning before we go any further. Maybe you came to church today and there's a burden that's weighing you down and that you're carrying. Why don't you just take a minute right now and give it to Jesus again? But what if I pick it back up? You can give it back again. That's the awesome thing. You can do it as many times as it takes until you finally stop carrying what you were never meant to carry. Because he can handle it. How many know he can handle it? He can. He can handle it. So why don't you just, just close your eyes for a minute. Why don't you just, why don't you just take 10 seconds and, or 15 seconds and just say, Jesus, I'm laying this thing at your feet. My worries, my anxieties, my stress, my career, my work, the questions that are unanswered right now, my marriage, my kids, my singleness, I lay it at your feet, God. There are things in my life that I can't figure out right now. There's brokenness in my life, my health, the diagnosis that the doctors have given me. It's a burden that's too much for me to carry. And so Jesus, I lay it at your feet. I surrender it to you. I give it to you. And I know that as I do that, you can make miracles happen. Things in my life that look lifeless or dead or broken, God, you can turn them into something beautiful. You can use them for your kingdom. And I trust you. In this moment, I choose to trust you. I lay it at your feet, Jesus. It's yours, not mine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, one more time. Would you just sing? Come alive. 
In the name of Jesus, come alive. Cause this is. So yours, oh God, so yours, Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive. We sing, come alive. Time everything you have, sing. Come alive. Just the voices and the keys sing, come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name Because this is. This is a house. So we bring it to you, Lord. Yeah. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of me. Come on, if you believe this is a house, this is a place where God moves, if you believe he still does miracles, why don't you give him the best praise you can right now? Come on, true life, your very best, your very best. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Man, it is so beautiful to hear your voices, to hear you lift up our Savior, our Creator. Man, I promise you, heaven is proud this morning. The Bible says he looks, that that he literally roams heaven looking over the earth, looking for people who will give him honor and worship and glory. So guess what? You got heaven's attention this morning. You got heaven's attention. I think that's that's a pretty cool thing, pretty awesome thing. But if it's your first time here, my name is Michael. I'm the lead pastor. And on behalf of my wife, Amanda, who co pastors, and all of our staff and leaders and dream team and everyone who's here to serve you this morning. We just want to say we are so glad if you're joining us today for the first time. And we also want to say hello to those of you out there on the other side of those cameras. Some of you are local. Some of you are spread across the country. We've even had people find us from around the world. I don't even know how that happens, but it does. No matter where you're joining us from or how you got here, we're just thrilled to spend some time with you this morning worshiping our creator. Right, Dan? Yeah? All right. <laughs> And he come, I'm ADD. You come into my field of view, something's going to happen. All right. So, uh, hey, would you all just help me welcome first time guests and everybody watching online. We're so glad you're here. Don't sit down yet unless you're, unless you need to, if your feet are hurting, I get it because that happens to me. But let's just ask God to bless our time together. We're going to get into the scripture here in just a minute. So would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we love you. We're so thankful that we get to gather in your house, that we get to worship you. And and now, God, we turn our attention towards your scriptures, towards your word. We know that you have something to say to us. And so we, we set our hearts in a posture of being expectant and hungry. Holy Spirit, we give you invitation to shine a light on the areas of our lives that need a light shine on them, that come into our hearts and point things out, put your finger on things, rearrange what needs to be rearranged. And we thank you that you're faithful to do that in a, in a kind, life-giving way. You just, you just keep leading us into the life you have for us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, fist bump or high five somebody if you're comfortable with that before you sit down. And Okay, I'm just going to assume it was more fist bumps than high fives because I heard like two little claps out there. Okay, so I'll just noted fist bumps are the preferred method of greeting at True Life Church. Got it, got it noted in my head. Um, hey, uh, can we just, I just want to have your permission for a minute to do something just a tiny bit different um, than what we would normally do at this point on a Sunday morning. Um, and, it, and just trust me, it's all going to sound spiritual because Carlos is here. And um, if I were talking without him, you'd be like, man, that was really dumb. But with Carlos... 
It's like an extra anointing, you know, on, on everything that you're saying. So uh, if you've attended True Life for long, you know that over the last several months, we've, we've kind of just made some small tweaks to the way we worship together on a Sunday morning. Um, and that's really growing out of a, where we kind of think the Holy Spirit is leading us and there's more to come, not so much in the Sunday morning, but just kind of the mission, vision, and structure of how we do church. We just feel like we have some really strong clarity from God on how he wants us to lead the church and what that's going to look like um, in, the new, in the next season. You know, God is a God of seasons. It's always changing, just like we have the fall season and the beautiful colors. Any fall lovers in the house, you know, it's, all, it's always changing. It's always changing. And so we've kind of changed Sunday mornings to create a little bit more space for what we just had, a, a, a moment in worship, a moment where we can respond to what God is doing in people's lives. And uh, Pastor Perry's done a great job building out a prayer team that's, you know, here in the front of the room at the end of services. For those of you who have something going on in your life, you just need somebody to agree with you and go before God with you. And I just think all of that is beautiful and so important. But the thing that we kind of sacrificed to do that was this video we used to show about right now called Church News. And Church News is a funny thing because as a staff, we are so used to it that it just becomes noise. And then you start wondering, like, does anybody actually watch that? Like, we don't know. Um, so we still run it before church begins, but kind of the question we've been trying to answer, the tension we've been feeling is, how do we make sure everybody knows all the stuff that's important? And so we're entering one of the busiest seasons, big, the busiest stretches that we have together as a church here in the fall and into winter and early next year. And so I just wanted to take a couple minutes this morning because Pastor Perry told me, hey, I have a super short message and I don't have a ton to say. And as a team, we said, hey, let's just take a minute and, and make sure the whole church knows what's coming. And so uh, some of you are planners. You love calendars. Where are all my calendar people at? Okay, so for you, this is your Sunday. Like, you wouldn't even care if I opened the Bible. You're, I'm about to speak your love language, all right? So and the rest of you don't care, and that's fine. But we have to cater to the planners. Otherwise, they don't show up to stuff because they get busy, all right? They're, they're busy doing things. So planners... You're about to love this because I'm going to take you from now to February, for real. I'm going to take you from now to February and all the kind of the big stuff going on in the life of our church. The first one being, if you haven't been a part of this, why don't you come back Wednesday? I'm just telling you, it's all right, bro. I got it. It's, it's not your fault. This thing, like, it's sometimes just. So y'all know. These touch screens, some churches pay like $10,000 for them. We paid $1,500. We figured out how to build it ourselves. But what that means is occasionally that happens. All right, so, hey, um, if you haven't been a part of this yet, why don't you join us this week for First Wednesday? Um, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'll be teaching. Um, if you haven't been a part of First Wednesday, they're special. Just a, We spend a little bit more time in worship. We spend a little bit more time in prayer, and we dig a little deeper. We're not on as tight a schedule on a first Wednesday as we are on a Sunday. That's right. Amen. And so if you haven't been a part of that, uh, we would love to have you come and join us this Wednesday. Parents, I know you'll have already gotten a lot of steps in Monday night. You might be tired, but um, but, but come join us anyway. It's going to be a great night together, and um, and we only got a couple of these left this year as we, as we head into the the new year. Can y'all believe we're talking about holidays and new year already? Isn't that crazy how fast this is all gone? And then next weekend, next weekend, I kind of poked at you a little bit in the message if you were here last weekend and just encourage you that if you call this your church home, if you consider this your church family, but you haven't taken the step of actually figuring out what that means and becoming a member and how you contribute to, to what God is doing here. And, and I know we, we've toyed with this in the past. We used to use the word partner instead of member. And, and uh, for right now, I'm just, I'm committed to the word member, not because you're a part of some excuse, exclusive club, but because this is spiritual family. You know, I've never said to my kids, I sure am glad you're a partner in the Smith family. You know, that would just be so weird. But God builds his church as spiritual family. And I'm fine with whatever language other churches use for, for right now. Uh, I, I believe it's important that we continue to use language that says, hey, I'm a, I'm a part of a family. I'm a part of, uh, of, of something that sometimes has some mess and some dysfunction. Can I hear an amen? But ultimately is, is meaningful and important. And so 
if you call yourself a part of the True Life family and you haven't taken this step yet, why don't you next weekend? Like make plans now to join us at five o'clock. There is childcare available if you have kids. And um, Amanda and I just sit with whoever shows up and our team and we just kind of talk through how we do church and why we do it the way we do. And then we answer your questions and, and we talk about what it means to be a member, what the expectations are on you. Because there, there, there are some expectations for every member of a family. Amen. And, uh, and so we, we talk through that and then invite you to make a decision. Should this really be my family or not? No pressure. We don't pressure you into that. We just give you all the information that you need to, to make that decision. If you've not done that, come on. It's time. All right? And um, the church will be fine without you. It'd be better with you. It really would. It would be better with you. And, and then we go on a journey to find your gifts and talents and what God has asked you to do. And then you can help be a part of incredible weekends and events like the one that's coming on November 27th. Y'all better cheer for this at the movies is back November 27th to December 11th. Okay, y'all didn't cheer very well, so let me speak in some of y'all's language that will help you. Free popcorn and, and soda at church November 27th to December 11th. And um, there's like some weird rules around this to, to stay legally. It's like we can't live stream this series. You got to be here. Um, and, and so you can't watch it on Facebook or YouTube because they would immediately take it down. Um, so we can't, we can't do that. But, and I'm not even supposed to say the names of the movies we're using because we are live streaming right now. Uh, so let me just see if I can give you some hints. All right. Three movies we'll be using this year. Let me see if I can give you some hints and you'll figure this out. All right. So one of this year's, I mean, it was this year's top blockbuster. Some of you already have that figured out. Let me just give you two others. Tom Cruise and jet airplanes. Come on, somebody. All right, so uh, if, you, if, y'all, if you haven't figured it out yet, let me introduce you to something called Google. All right, I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you will, you'll be able to navigate it from there. Um, the second one, I'm gonna give you a hint, but you're not, you're probably not gonna know what it is. Every once in a while, it's okay to play the lottery. All right, so that's the second hint. Okay, some, some of you're like, I have no idea, and you won't, because it's, uh, if you're not a, an avid movie watcher like myself, you might not have even found the movie. And, um, and then the last movie that we'll close out with this year, uh, let's see, how do I give you a hint for on this one? Your heart might grow several sizes larger than what it is right now, okay? okay? All right, so uh, that's, that's our At The Movies um, lineup for this year. It's gonna be so good. Can I ask you to do two things regarding At The Movies? Two things. Number one, would you pray? Because this is a series where we see people make decisions to follow Jesus every year. Um, I don't fully understand why it works the way it works, but every year there's a miracle story that comes out of at the movies. In fact, uh, one of the guys who's here this morning leading an entire team, he and his family uh, got involved in church for the first time in a long time and are kind of going through like cool personal revival, following Jesus with passion right now. They came to church at the movies. Somebody invited them to at the movies. So there are more stories like that waiting in the wings. Can we pray? for those kinds of miracles. Would you join me in praying for this series at the movies? And then the second thing I want you to do is while you're praying, I want you to look for opportunities to invite somebody. Don't come alone, all right? We'll have invite cards out for you in the weeks ahead and you can use that, use your social media if you're doing the social media thing. Whatever whatever you have to do to get people here, bribe them, all right? Popcorn, soda, free coffee, tie them up, throw them in the trunk of your car. Ask for forgiveness when they get here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just, just what, I'm just, don't do that. That was a joke. Some of you are like, okay, pastor said, God must be good with it. He's not. Don't do it. It was a joke. Whatever you got to do, though, that's, that's legal and life-giving. All right, let's just do that. Legal and life-giving. Get your friends to at the movies. It's going to be so great. And then uh, I'm so excited. Again, we have Giving Hope Christmas Shop. Come on, y'all. Coming up on December 17th. And um, if you don't know what this is, we transformed the whole building uh, into a shopping experience. And we work with some some local community partners to identify families that they just they could just use a little help this year. And we want the parents to look like heroes when the kids get up on Christmas morning and they see gifts around the tree. And uh, that's really the way we structure it. We just want to be the hands and feet of Jesus, no strings attached. We do events like this and will continue to because Every once in a while, you need to just go lock arms with other people and do something bigger than yourself. 
And that's what this is about. That's what the egg hunt's about in the springtime. It's, it's, it's not so we can have a big event and pat ourselves on the back. It's for you to grow spiritually and develop as a follower of Jesus and be reminded, oh, I'm not supposed to worry about me all the time. Can I hear an amen, somebody? All right, that's why we do it. And, um, and what'll happen is some of you, while you're serving at this event, you'll get hooked on it. You'll get addicted to it. And then we wanna lead you towards some of our serve groups and show you how you can be a part of things like this all the time, not just in these big events. We'll follow that up with what we call Legacy Weekend and our legacy offering, it's Sunday, December 18th. I'll take the Sunday morning that day and just share with you where I think God is leading the church in 2023. And then we give you an opportunity to sow into that financially. You will not hear me talk about that offering that day because uh, I just have this theory that the Bible is right and true and it's really clear, like I'm not supposed to try to manipulate you. You're not supposed to give out of compulsion. So I'm gonna tell you about it ahead of time. We'll mention it several more times between now and then so that you can go ask God, hey God, above and beyond my tithe, the 10th that I return to you through my local church, beyond that, I have a little extra. Am I supposed to give that? Am I supposed to give any portion of it? And if God tells you yes, then you say, how much? And then do whatever he tells you, all right? And he will only ask, I'm just telling you, he will only ask you to give out of your margin, out of the extra, all right? He will never ask you to swipe a credit card and go in debt and then hope for a blessing. That's, that's just silly talk. Can I hear an amen, somebody? That's silly talk. All right, so you just, that, is that a fair deal? You ask God and then do what God says. That, is that fair to you? Is that all right? All right, so if he speaks to you, do that. Calendar people, you enjoying this? Everybody else, you falling asleep? Okay, almost done. And then another one I need you to pray and invite. I'm just telling you now so you can put it in your calendars. Christmas at True Life will be December 22nd and 23rd. That's a Thursday and a Friday, 7 p.m. All the music, all the candlelight, an invitation to meet Jesus. And then on Christmas Eve at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. So that's four services that we have planned right now for Christmas. We are kind of just watching like the numbers on the weekend and the momentum and how it feels and whether or not we feel like we could staff it. We do tentatively have the Wednesday night, the, the 21st, that we could add a fifth service if we feel like we need it. But right now we're going with four services, 22nd, 23rd, and then on Christmas Eve, it's gonna be beautiful. Listen, if you have friends or family who aren't serving Jesus, who, who aren't connected to a local church, you might have to be at multiples. Like you might need to be at three of these services or four of these services with a guest sitting next to you uh, so that they can, they can meet the Prince of Peace, the hope of the world. And, um, and I promise you, we're gonna give an invitation for people to do that. Our team's already been working hard on the music and the creativity and all that, all that good stuff. And then the next day, I don't know if y'all know how this works, but the day after Christmas Eve is Christmas. Happens to fall on a Sunday this year, and um, you can come, but you'll be doing church in the car in the parking lot, all right? So uh, we will not have services on Christmas morning. If your house is anything like my house, you'll have some coffee, some cold milk, some cinnamon rolls, and you'll be opening gifts, you know what I'm saying? All right, so and we want you to stay home, enjoy it with your family, and Dream Team, we always wanna end the year giving you a weekend to rest, take a weekend off, especially the way you've been serving after COVID. There, uh, there are fewer of you that, in, all across the country, fewer of you that are engaging in volunteer work. Um, I believe God is gonna fix that problem in 2023, but I know some of you are tired, and so we want you to rest that day. And we know like after doing four or five services, and then you got Christmas, it's not actually rest. So the following weekend, January 1st, will be church at home, all right? We want you to all stay home, do church online together, enjoy the time with your family and rest. And then last one, 21 days of prayer and fasting will begin January 8th to 28th. And it's in my heart, I'm sorry, it's not the last one, we have one more after this. And But, but uh, it is in my heart that we will have the highest level of engagement in 21 days of prayer this coming year that we have ever had uh, before. So just be thinking about it now, how you're gonna participate in that season of, of prayer. We come together corporately on Wednesday nights and Saturday mornings, and we just ask God to bless the new year. Pastor Perry, start sneaking out here. One more for you. I told you I was gonna go all the way to February. We do have Thrive 
marriage conference coming back this year, February 10th. That's my birthday. February 10th and 11th, thrivemarriageconference.com. Uh, a handful of you have already registered. And listen, you, you're going to want to register. We're starting the marketing and advertising way earlier this year. Uh, we're talking to more churches about participating in, the, in our marriage conference this year. And in Jesus' name, there will not be a COVID wave the week of, of our marriage conference uh, this year. And so uh, we're anticipating that this, this room will fill up a bit more. And I know single people, you're like, what about my conference? Let me just say this. We're working on it. You're not less. You don't matter less. We don't care about you less or love you less. And God doesn't have less to accomplish in your life just because you're not, you don't have a spouse. Come on, can I hear an amen, somebody? All right, so I'm just, I'll just tell you, can I hear an amen, somebody? All right, come on, married people. Before you were married, you were single. All right, there ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing broken in your singleness. The Apostle Paul, I think, would have a thing or two to say about that. So um, excited, excited, excited for where we're headed. I got it done a little faster. I gave you a little more time. <laughs> Pastor Perry's going to preach and take us into the next part of our, our Beatitudes series. And I'm going to do this again. I know it's a repeat, and, but I just feel like we're fine. We're supposed to, and I know you're going to talk a little bit about it in your message, but... Pastor Perry had a rough week, and um, we schedule this ahead of time now. We have this preaching schedule, and where we try to keep everybody at a healthy pace and make sure nobody's going too much. And he was actually supposed to preach last weekend, and then we switched because he's like an expert baptizer, and he didn't want to preach wet. And I'm selfish, and I want to preach on baptism weekend, so it worked out. <laughs> we did a little trade, and then this week, Pastor Perry lost a good friend, a childhood friend, um, who wandered away from Jesus and. You had the opportunity to, in the hospital, kind of point him back to Jesus and pray with him. And I just think that's so beautiful. You're so gifted at that. You're so good at that. I remember walking into a hospital with you one time as a family was going through a crisis and they were losing a family member. A lady in our church was losing her father. And I'm just telling you, I was lost. I didn't know what to do. And Pastor Perry's like, here's what we do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. We're going to say this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus, for this man. And um, so, yes. Yeah. So he's going to preach through pain this morning, and we all have to do that sometimes. It's not easy, and, um, and I know it's a struggle for you to get this message ready, um, but I love you, and I'm proud of you, and um, I gave him a chance, y'all. I'm not heartless. I was like, do you want me to preach? And he was like, no, I got it. All right, so stretch your hands towards Pastor Perry this morning. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to anoint him as he, as he brings the word. Heavenly Father, I pray for uh, Perry today as he preaches your word, as he shares. I know it's a short message, and, but it, the length does not match with the anointing. I know it's something you've put in his heart to say that you give him clarity to share this morning about the purity of our hearts. And as he grieves the loss of a friend and even though we're celebrating he's in heaven, it still hurts. It still hurts to see people that we love and care about leave this life and move on to the next. So Holy Spirit, strengthen him, give him comfort and encouragement today as, as he speaks on your behalf. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. Said? Amen. 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 I forgot Amen. to say one other thing before I give it to you. Were you coming in for a hug? Because I yeah, felt I was. like That's it looked right. like you were doing like the that, Paul's that, like that, that greet was, each other with a brotherly awkward. kiss. Yeah. I'm like, hey dude. No, no. Hey. <laughs> hey. I love you. I don't know if I love you that much. All right. Hey, the reason I just did that just now, one of the reasons is this is a tension that we're trying to figure out as a, as a team, as a church. They say that when an organization gets larger than 200 people, that you're no longer a family, you're an organization. And um, there's about three to 400 of you that worship on a weekend. When you all, when you all show up on the same weekend, like Easter, there's, there's eight, 900, close to 1,000 of you. Because a lot of people come once every four weeks, once every six weeks, uh, which is cool. I'm not, I'm not beating you up on that. I wish you'd come more, but I get it, like work schedules and all sports and all that, all that yeah. kind of stuff. So the tension I'm feeling is the church is a spiritual family. So I'm committed to finding a way to continue to use family language, even though we're larger organizationally than a family. And so I think it's so important for us to even just to model that, to take a minute and say, hey, Pastor Perry, you're, you're dealing with some stuff. Let's pray for you. Yeah. Just like we'll have time at the end of service today to pray over your needs. So, hey, would you all join me in just living in that tension? Like I think it's a good, healthy tension. God is building his, his house, he's building his family, but I don't, need, I don't need it to feel like a business. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, so love you. Come on, give Pastor Perry some love. He's going to bring the word. It's going to be fantastic. 
All right. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, and you will hear a lot. Uh, I was thinking during the first service that if I was back in college and I was preaching that message before my professors that I would have miserably failed the elocution and everything else that I was supposed to do in that. Uh, and I appreciate the church. This is one of, the, one of the things that I hear other people say about our church is that uh, we're very transparent. And uh, you've heard Pastor Michael, I know, last year in... Uh, uh, losing his father-in-law and, and some of the stuff that he, you know, he, he preached. And it was, it was hard. It was raw. And I did. I, left, I left my, lost my best childhood friend. Uh, we were the rascals of Dagsboro, you know, on our little spider bikes riding up and down terrorizing. Um, I would, you know, I could tell stories all day of some of our Halloween events that... Uh, some places just needed, they needed cleaning, so we supplied the soap and stuff like that. And uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I actually one time won 20 bucks from all of my friends. I soaped a police car with the policeman in it. Um, I did have to do something later because of that. But, uh, but that was my buddy. We, we did a lot of mischief together. Uh, but my buddy, uh, I'll talk a little bit later, is also the one who brought me to Christ. And um, so I'll talk about it. But today, today uh, I'm going to jump around. And listen, we're going to skip a lot of scripture and stuff. Uh, don't blame Pastor Michael, you know, uh, for that. I knew he was giving all of these announcements. We talked about it. We planned it. And I'm a scripture guy, so I threw a bunch of scriptures Go to the app. I'm going to skip over some of them uh, just for the sake of time. Uh, not that they're not important. They're very important. That's why you need to go home and read them. Uh, but we're talking about the Beatitudes, and we'll jump right in. Matthew 5, 8, the next one in line. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Uh, one of the things I've discovered, uh, Pastor, I don't know if you've done this or not in the study of this, is I've preached about the Beatitudes before over the last 40 years preached a lot about it where I would mention them and they look so self-explanatory that, that you just look at them and go, oh yeah that's what that means and then you start chiseling down into it and I'm not going to really get as deep as I would like to because I just felt the Lord leading me another way but there's a lot to these I mean you could take some of these and preach three weeks on just one of them you know so uh, do some study on that. It's fun. So, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And it's talking about there, the pure in heart. A heart that thinks about what is right. That loves what is good. And that desires the very best. There's sometimes I don't find my heart saying that. My heart doesn't always look for the, the best. Or desires what is good. Uh, or, or, or what is right. Sometimes it desires other things, and we'll talk about that uh, in, in just a little bit. But blessed are the pure in heart. Uh, listen, the, the, the church has been really good at trying to produce a purity of heart. And they've done it the wrong way. We've talked about this before. Uh, matter of fact, one of uh, the first sermons I preached at True Life uh, I believe it was called permission slip, and that God gives us a permission slip to do some things, you know. Uh, but I was raised in a church where we had a lot of list of rules, and I, I've said that before. And those those instructions, man, you had to read them. Like one of the things was, uh, I had a hard time with this. Uh, we were against cup people swimming with the opposite sex, which when you're raised at the beach. You know, that's where my home was near the beach. That's hard to do. Only they didn't put it that way. In their teachings, it said, we are against mixed bathing. I'm like, well, cool. As long as we don't get in a bathtub together, I've got that rule taken care of. Mixed bathing. Uh, I understand that. Okay. Uh, so we had a lot of rules. So I looked up some rules on some things and, and 
uh, for the sake of time, I decided not to bring the pictures of it. So just trust me. These are things you can Google them yourself. You ever, you ever pick up a product, you're going to buy it, and you read the instructions, and it has this dumb thing of not to do with it? You're like, who is that stupid? Well, I'll tell you who's that stupid. They put it there because somebody did it and then sued the company because they did it. Like, here's one on a hair dryer. Do not use while sleeping. <laughs> All of you out there, I don't have to worry about that. So, uh, on a child's stroller, actual label, remove child before folding. <laughs> this is for our hospitality team. On a coffee pot, do not hold over people. <laughs> For all of our fishermen, this is on a package with a three-hook uh, fishing hook, uh, a three-pronged fishing hook, harmful if swallowed. <laughs> on, on a drill, a carpenter's drill, uh, this is a, it, like you have around the house, do not use as a dental drill. <laughs> you, you laugh, but... <laughs> Penny and I were talking to somebody one time and she was getting ready to have some dental work done. And you know, have you ever like broke a tooth and you have like that little sharp thing that your tongue always finds? And we were talking to somebody and the person we were talking to said, oh yeah, I had that problem so I got my Dremel. <laughs> Do not use it. Here, here's one of uh, favorite. Uh, I, I can remember at Christmas we used to do the children's programs and you would order these t-shirts and they had the iron-on decals that you could iron them on. And this is the label on that. Do not iron while wearing. <laughs> so, listen, we're going we're to talk a little bit to find out what pure of heart is. We're going to talk about what purity is, is not. Okay? Um, what, 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 what that is, is not. And listen, purity of heart does not mean that we're never going to have a bad thought. It doesn't mean that we're never going to sin. It doesn't mean that we're not going to mess up now and then. That's not what purity is. It's not a list of rules and regulations that if you wear this or cut this or go here or don't go there, then you're pure. You can do all of those things and not be pure. In, in 1 John 1, 8, it says that... Uh, if we say that we're without sin, we deceive ourselves. So we, we all have that. Uh, and it's more than purity, uh, if we get down to it, it's more than an image. Uh, years ago, there was an advertising slogan for Canon cameras. Uh, and I believe it was Andre Agassi at that time, the tennis star. And they were taking pictures of him. And, and in the uh, thing, the, the slogan was uh, image is everything. Anybody remember that? Image is everything. And I think sometimes in the church world, we've been that way. Image is everything. We do it growing up. I mean, you know, like kids. <laughs> your, your kids has, has never played a sport. They've never dribbled a basketball. They've never swung a bat. They've never played volleyball. They've never done anything but played Nintendo or whatever the games are uh, out there. You might say, you're really old. Maybe it's still a thing. I don't know. Uh, but uh, they've never done that. They've done, but they've got to have that $200 pair of sneakers because why? <laughs> you know, you can have bedroom slippers if that's all you're going to do is stay in front of the TV. Why do you have to have them? Not so they can make you run faster and jump higher. That used to be a slogan for sneakers, by the way. Uh, the, uh, not, not that you could do any of that, but so that you would look cool in front of the other kids, you got to have that. We do it as adults. Ladies, you got to have that certain handbag. You know, guys, you know, you got to have, I don't know what, maybe the tennis shoes. Brand new ones today. My wife got them on sale. You know, sketchers are the way. That's it if they're on sale. Uh, <laughs> but listen, we, we get these image things. And in Christianity, if we're not careful, we get the image thing. I remember going actually to a grow conference years ago. And I was going in there and I was going, youth pastor, youth pastor, youth pastor, youth. They all have the faux, the faux hawk, you know. And the youth pastor. We get these images about certain things. Not bad. But that doesn't define who we are, just the image. 
We'll do strange things to make us look a certain way or to create a certain image, even though it's not real. And if we're not careful, it goes into our relationships. We'll come to church. We'll come to a Thrive conference, to a marriage conference, and we'll smile and we'll act like everything is really good and we'll talk the good talk and our marriage is crumbling and we won't be honest enough to get the help that we need during something like that. Purity of heart isn't about that image, not at all. And again, listen, purity of heart does not mean that you'll never, again, have that bad thought. Again, I'm jumping. Please forgive me today uh, because this isn't going to be most organized, but hopefully it will touch the part that we need it to, to touch. And there's a scripture which I already read. But let's look at this. Pure in the, in the Greek, it's katharos, which simply means clean, and pure, clean and pure. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking about the image. I run across this when I was Googling stuff for the other things. Uh, one of the images that people get uh, is, is like in their vehicles. I, you know, I, I, I'm always amazed, you know, like with some of the vehicles that are out there, like, you know, it's like super trucks. It's got like giant tires and four-wheel drive and this and that and there and it is never going to leave the pavement now pastor michael has one but he pulls this great big trailer with it so he needs that you know with that plus he likes trucks you know but there's some guys that i gotta spend all this money, and it is never going to leave you wouldn't even think of leaving the pavement and if it's snowing outside even though you got four-wheel drive you're going to take the car because you don't want that slush all over your truck well they have a product and, and Google it, it's real. It's called spray on mud. <laughs> and you go to your truck and you spray it so it looks like you've been out mudding. Well, we do that so many times in our lives. We spray on Christianity. This is the way I'm supposed to look. This is the way I'm supposed to act. Uh, it's the reverse of the spray on mud. Listen, Jesus, he emphasized the heart of man. Jesus never said, do this or do that, and it'll make you a better Christian on the outward things about that. You don't see him doing that at all. He emphasized, he emphasized the heart of man. And listen, the controversy that Jesus had with the Pharisees was due to the fact that they put an emphasis on the outward man while he put an emphasis on the inside of man. So we're going to go through some scriptures here. And again, speed reading here. It says, woe unto you. Now, listen, he is talking to the Pharisees here. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. You make clean the outside of the cup but, uh, and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Can you imagine that talking right to them? And then he says, thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup, and the platter, and that the outside of them may be clean also. <laughs> Think, would you like to come to my house if I hand you a bowl of soup? The soup looks really good. The bowl looks beautiful. But as I'm pouring it in your bowl, you look inside, and you can see yesterday's lunch, you know, <laughs> stuck to the side of the bowl. You know, well, that's what Jesus was saying to him. And then he says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. I like how he lists them here, you know. Yes, yeah, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, whatever, you know, you are. For you are like the whited sepulchers, which indeed, somebody asked me this one, what is, what is that, what is that, what is, what is the sepulcher? Well, I remember an old man in the church one time, he was doing a Bible study, leading the Bible study, and uh, he got to that word and he, he didn't have a concordance or anything to look it up, and he said, you know, you're like the whited sepulchers. And somebody in the Bible said, he said, what is it? He said, well, it's about these bones. Why did sea parkers are these birds? <laughs> and they feed on bones. <laughs> now, sepulcher is a tomb. It's a grave. So he said, you're like whited sepulchers, but you're full of dead man's bones and uncleanness. And then he says, even so, ye also uh, outwardly appear righteous, Unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Uh, listen, uh, their whole concern were the actions of man. 
Jesus was concerned with the, with the attitudes and the, uh, uh, that provoked the actions. You know, when I pray for people, a lot of times you'll hear me say a phrase if I pray for you, uh, Lord, right to the source. You know, if you come up and you say, I've had this nagging cough, I've had this, you know, I'm going to pray, Lord, go right to the very source of it. Heal them, not just, not just the things on the outside. You know, if somebody is like, man, I just, you know, I lost my temper and I yelled at my wife or my kids, you know, well, okay, let, let's get down to the source of it. You know, forgive me for yelling, but yeah, okay, forgive for yelling, but why are you angry? What's the source of it? And Jesus, even with their actions, he wanted to know, why are you this way? It's the inside. Now, when he made that platter, when he talked about it, think about it. You don't want to eat anything. Jesus said, you need to be like the bowl that's clean on the inside first. You know, when I clean like plates, if I'm washing them by hand, uh, I'm, I'm going to start with the dirtiest inside of that bowl. I'm going to work to the outside of it, you know, most of the time. By the time I get the inside done, there's, you don't even see anything. I'll wash it anyway. Uh, but you do that. Jesus said, take care of the inside. The outside will take care of itself. But if I had to choose between the two, if I was starving and I really needed something to eat, give me the bowl that's clean on the inside. All right? We can work on the outside later. Proverbs, Solomon said this, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. If your heart is pure, what flows from it is going to be pure and holy. If your heart is not pure, what comes out of it is not going to be pure or holy. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you got dirt in, dirt's going to come out. Now, <laughs> I'm going to skip through this next section of scripture, but I'm just going to describe it to you. Look it up in your notes. So here, here's the short version of it. Jesus, again, he's talking to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees say, this is my translation. Hey, look, Jesus, your disciples did not wash their hands properly before they ate. You know, that's me sometimes. You know, Pastor, you're just nasty. I am a hunter. <laughs> I was raised on a farm. Yes, I wash my hands. But you got to stop somewhere or it's a whole bath, you know. <laughs> but he said, Jesus, the, the Pharisees, they called him because there was this ritualistic thing they had to do. They said, your disciples are breaking the law. They're not, they're not cleansing properly. They're not washing properly. And Jesus flips it on them. He says, well, you know, the Bible says to honor your father and mother, but you guys break that because you add something onto it. You say that it is for their own good that I am saying this. Let me put it in the day's translation. Somebody looks at you and says, now, no offense intended. <laughs> How many know you're getting ready to get offended <laughs> when, when they say, no offense intended, but... The disciples were saying, or Jesus was saying to the Pharisees, listen, you're talking about my guys didn't wash properly? You know, that, that they broke a law? You guys are dishonoring your mom and dad, and because you say, but it's for their own good, that it's okay to do that, and you go on your merry way. It doesn't work that way. And listen, stop, that. no offense. Into, imagine right now, if you're a, a, a new mother, and you bring your baby up later to be prayed for, and Pastor Perry, being the compassionate guy that I am, looks at this brand new baby, and I look down in the, in, in, in the stroller, and I go, oh, look, no offense intended, but that is the ugliest baby I have ever seen. Oh, no, no, you can't be offended because I said not to. You know, no, I didn't intend to offend. Yes, I did. Well, Jesus, that's what he said to the Pharisees. And, and let me see if I can find it. I, I'm going to skip through the scripture here a little bit. Um, uh. <laughs> the disciples said to Jesus, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard you say that? <laughs> I love it. Uh, we did a Bible study years ago, a men's group I was in, and it was just called the sarcasm of Jesus. <laughs> 
Matthew alone kept us busy because he's like <laughs> in their face all of the time. It's a great, it was a great study. So listen, Jesus is saying this. Jesus is saying that true relationship with God is not outward rituals, but it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Uh, when, when I spoke years ago on, on permission slip, I, I talked about the rules in the church. Like I said, no mixed bathing. But one of the things when I got saved in the early 70s uh, that people had problems with were uh, women wearing makeup, women wearing jewelry, women with short hair. You know, a lot of these rules are always about women. Uh, <laughs> the men are making the rules most of the time. Women, you know. And uh, uh, the men thing was you, you couldn't have long hair. Uh, well, uh, thank God I had a pastor that wasn't like that, you know, but uh, because I would have been thrown out of the church day one. And uh, I don't have to worry about that now. I must be really holy. Uh, but I shared with you a song. So bear with me with my crackly voice today. But there used to be gospel groups. Anybody remember the gospel groups from travel around? If you had somebody who could play guitar and somebody who could play piano and harmonize just a little bit and someone owned a van, you had a gospel group. <laughs> and they would go around and sing and some of them were good. Some of them were, God bless them. <laughs> but they had this one song, true song. And it went like this. If your hair is too long, there is sin in your heart. Get it cut today and make a new start. Why go around in fear and dread? I can't do the tenor, but the tenor would kick in. With a shaggy mess upon your head. <laughs> if your hair's too long, if your hair's too long, there is sin in your heart. I need Mark to help me on that one. You know, he could have that baritone thing in there. Make the inside of the cup clean. Make the inside. So let's move on here. Uh, the word pure. The word pure, we need to understand it means physically. We need to be physically pure. We do need to stay away from things that are unhealthy to us. We don't need to be doing things to our, our, our body that is harmful to us. You know, and when Jesus put things, when, the, when, when God put things in the scripture, uh, certain rules and things, there is a reason why you don't sleep around. There is a reason why you don't abuse drugs. There is a reason when he said, don't be drunk with wine. There is a reason for those things because you physically pay a price for it. Yes, and even overeating and other things, you pay a price for it. So we need to be pure physically. And that word pure, in the physical sense, it's broke up in two things in the Greek, means to be purified by fire or to be pruned like a vine so it can grow fruit. And then there is also an ethical side of it. And ethically, we need to be free from corrupt desires. How do I do that? You get into the word of God. You have a good and healthy prayer life. You, you, you stay away from things that would uh, uh, corrupt and put desires. Don't put evil things before your eyes. We need to be free from sin and guilt. Because even when we ask forgiveness for sin, the enemy wants to keep reminding us of our sin so we live in guilt and shame. And you need to be free from that because God has given you a pure heart. And we need to realize that with a pure heart, we can be blameless and innocent. But you don't know the things I've done. I'll talk about that in a moment with my buddy when I share some things about that. Because he felt like he could never be blameless. He could never be innocent again. And so ethically, we need those things. We need to, listen, we need, then it says that we will see God. We will see God. The promise to the pure in heart is that they shall see God. Now, listen, <laughs> when, when, when you serve God and you're a Christian, your heart is right with him, uh, you, you, you have been uh, set free from your sin, you've confessed him as your Lord and Savior, you're going to see God someday. But I believe it's talking about more than just when we, when we die. You know, the basic purpose of a lot of religions is try to get them to see God, the God that they're talking about. Job asked, who by searching can find God to perfection? So listen, how do we do this? Listen, 
With a pure heart, you will see God in places that you never imagined before. When you got a pure heart, you will see God in places you never imagined before. It's just, it, <laughs> it's going to happen. Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. Uh, he said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise, but you've revealed them to little children. Do you know that God reveals stuff to us? I pulled in the parking lot this morning, and when I pulled in the parking lot, uh, Erica was out there, and I was walking by her, I turned around and got my camera, and I took a picture of the sun coming up over the trees. I said, isn't God neat? You know, <laughs> you can see God when your eyes are open and you've got a pure heart. You can see God in so many other things. So many other things. When Jesus, when Jesus promised that uh, the pure, pure in heart would see God, he was saying also that we would apprehend God. We would understand the things of God. Listen, Christians, uh, Christians see God where others do not. Christians can see God in the middle of anything. I was sitting in the hospital with the, with the, with the uh, hospice workers this week, and they were so wonderful, and they were so lovely, and so helpful, and, and they were being helpful to me once they found out I was a pastor, and I never went in addressing myself as that, uh, but uh, they found out I was a pastor. Oh, Pastor, pastor Perry, Pastor Perry, Pastor Perry, and I stopped one of them after a very critical moment one time, three of the ladies there. I said, I, I want you all to know something. Uh, watching you guys operate, you know, not, not, not every minister stands behind a pulpit. And one girl started crying. She's a Christian. I said, what you guys do is minister to people every day, all the time. You know, it, it, we put these labels on things, you know. Not everybody's a pastor. Not everybody's an evangelist. But I said, not everybody's a minister stands behind a pulpit. You girls are one. You know why? Because I could see God in what they were doing. I don't know if they were, I don't think they were all saved, but, but I can see God in what they're doing. Christians, Christians see God where others don't. We look at nature, we see him in circumstances. Pastor talked about the, the, the tough times we go through a, a little earlier. You can see God in the middle of it. Matter of fact, in a couple of weeks, it, it would have been eight years since I stepped down as a senior pastor and true life started becoming my home. And, you know, those of you with me, you know that whew, I was just a hot mess. I mean, I was, I was that. But you know what? I look back on it, and I can see God. I can apprehend God in the middle of all of that. God lets us do that. When you see God, you also see people differently. Because you start to see people like God sees them. Instead of like the world sees them or like you want to see them. So we're going to move here just a little bit. Uh, read these later. The beatitude surely shows us that the fact that our only hope is in the grace of God. We fixed it. Thank you, Big Red. Appreciate it. Before it was spelled wrong, it was the garse of God. <laughs> it's by the grace of God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God. That's it. The grace of God. I'm here today because of the grace of God. I can have a pure heart because of the grace of God. But you sin. But I also have 1 John 1, 9. That if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I can have a pure heart. But I know the stuff you did in your past. He doesn't. Because the Bible says he takes my sin and he throws it in the sea of forgetfulness but I need to confess it and get it gone and get it out. The grace of God. So, what I want to share with you, my heart, and in praying, I really felt like in the first service, there were people that raised their hand and I just feel like I didn't want to preach today. I'll be honest. I spent the last two days out in the woods one day with with my buddy Mark and my son Joel and another friend Don of mine. And I needed it. We worked, we laughed, we carried on. 
Yesterday, I spent the whole day by myself in the woods, just mental health day. And let me say, if you're here and I had to cancel an appointment with you and I just put it off, this whole past week has been just a blur. Um, I, I am really sorry. I would do it again the same way, but I am really sorry that I had to do that. I mean that. Um, it's not because you weren't important. It's just my head wasn't in the right place to help anybody. And uh, I appreciate a pastor that gives the uh, freedom to get our head on straight. And uh, so let me tell you a, a little story about my buddy Greg. We were, again, we're the rapscallions of Dagsboro and got into trouble, got into mischief. We became best friends. It was one of those storybook friendships. I moved to the town that he was in. He was the top dog. He was alpha. I sat on the school bus in seventh grade by a girl just because there was an open seat. I didn't know it was his old girlfriend. Long story short, I ended up at his house one day after baseball practice. We were on the same team, and all we did was try to show each other up. His mom picked me up from practice. Who knew she knew my mom? And said, your mom can't pick you up. You're going to stay at my house for a few hours. Oh, and I got to go grocery shopping. Fast forward a little bit. Greg and I are in the backyard punching, wrestling, kicking, doing everything we could because we couldn't stand each other until neither one of us could whoop the other one. And we ended up kind of making a truce and became best friends. His house was my house and vice versa. If I messed up in his house, his mama would thump my head along with his. We were tight. He's the best man at my wedding. I remember for my bachelor party, he said, Perry, I didn't put it together, not because I didn't want to. It's just me and you, bud. You're moving off. You're going to be gone. I'm taking you out to a nice dinner. It's just going to be the two of us. I was fine with that. Um, in high school, Greg one day begged me and begged me and begged me to come to church. You think asking people to church isn't important? Asking your friends, your heathen friends, to come to church isn't important? Greg comes to school on a Tuesday. Perry, come to church with me. Perry, come to church. What, when did you start going to church Sunday? <laughs> He's an experienced Christian, you know. Come on, come to church, come to church, come to church, come to church. All stinking day long in school. I thought we were going to have another fight. And finally, it's like, for the love of God, I will go to church with you if you will shut up and leave me alone. And I go into church in the middle of a youth revival where 40 teenagers got saved in two weeks. And... The altar call was given that night, and I gave my heart to the Lord. Now we were tag teaming for Jesus. Man, mm. Well, years later, Greg turned his back on the Lord and walked away from the faith. Heavy drinking, drugs, eventually hard drugs, the hardest you can do. I stayed his friend. Pick him up, take him out to breakfast sometimes. Loaned him money a couple of times. Gifted him money a couple of times. I was there when his mama died. There the day before his dad died. Monday his daughter calls me. The last time I saw Greg, let me back up a little bit. And please allow me. I'm going to do this without crying. The last time I saw Greg, we were, I took him out to breakfast, and we were talking. He'd been in trouble, front page of the newspaper. He got caught. And um, I said, Greg, we, we just reminiscing, talking about the mischief, laughing, carrying on. And I said, uh, Greg, man, we were young. We had some, we were the best of friends, and he stopped, and he got dead serious. And he said, Perry, you're still my best friend. If you look at his Facebook page, it's me and him. And he said, I haven't had any friends since you. 
I've had a lot of associating people, but not anybody that was a friend. Broke my heart. So Monday I go in, and he barely can talk. His daughter, he called me. And so I talked to him about his soul. I said, Greg, is your heart right with God? Well, I'm going to let somebody else explain it. This is the way to keep from crying. Anybody here on Facebook, if you're not my friend on Facebook, don't wait for me to friend you. I, I have rejection issues. <laughs> so you have to request me because <laughs> if you don't answer back, I just really have a hard time. <laughs> but if you're on Facebook with me, I have an alter ego. <laughs> My alter ego is my Sussex County <laughs> conglomeration of me and others. And it, he's called Cousin Zeke. Does anybody ever seen Cousin Zeke before? Yeah, yeah, some of you. Cousin Zeke, I just go and have some fun with it and try to put a positive message. So yesterday I was sitting in the woods. I had gone hunting. And I had this little skit that I do. I had it all worked out. If you haven't seen Cousin Zeke and go on that, you want to go like three weeks ago tracking a deer, trust me, you'll enjoy it <laughs> or you'll be disgusted like my mother and disown me. Uh, but Cousin Zeke, I started out, I even had props to the side and here's Cousin Zeke if you haven't seen him. <laughs> Pitiful. <laughs> Cousin Zeke talked like this. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll see you directly. <laughs> but that's Cousin Zeke. But we worked this out. Sean helped a whole lot. It helped. He did it. <laughs> but this was my heart. In the middle of the thing, Cousin Zeke disappeared and this happened. Go ahead. Hey, Cousin Zeke here. i tell you what, you know. <sighs> We're going to drop Cousin Zeke for just a minute or two here. Give him a break. I just wanted to share that it's um, been a rough week. I said goodbye to one of my oldest friends this week. Watched him say goodbye to his family, to his kids, his uncle, his sister. Hold the phone up to his ear so he could talk to them. My friend was wasted away to nothing. Very sick. I talked to him about his soul, and he told me something. He said, I'm too bad. And I shared with him that God was bigger than any of his bad. I shared with him that God loved him, and like the prodigal son, he's on the porch waiting for you. And I told my friend, his name's Greg. I said, Greg, you take one step to him, and the father's off the porch, and his arms are around you. And Greg prayed with me. Wasn't long after that, a few hours after that. In the night, just me and him sitting in the room. I was holding, holding his hand. And he took his last breath and went on to be with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The sad part is, because of addictions and some of the demons that he fought for most of his life, he had wasted so much of it. And he's so talented and such a great guy. I'm going to miss my buddy. I'm going to miss him a lot. So I'm just going to tell you. Take a little time. Find that old friend. Maybe that family member that you've been on the outs with. Give him a hug. Give him a call. Talk to him. This life is very short. Greg, I'm going to miss you. i going to kick your backside for the time you've wasted. But I will see you again, my friend. Love you. And all my Cousin Zeke fans, hang in there. He'll be back. Bye. Greg struggled with the fact that the things he did made him ineligible to receive God's love that he was too far gone to ever have a pure heart. That 
God was done with him. And I think part of that was the religion that had been pumped into both of our minds when we were younger. When I told him, Greg, the Father is waiting. And you take one step. The Father is immediately there, throwing his arms around you, covering you with a robe, and making you part of the family. And I said, Greg, is the blood of Jesus weak? He shook his head, no. <laughs> That's when I said to him, God is bigger than your bad. And I'm telling you today, God is bigger than your bad. Some of you are struggling. Maybe you've come to church for a long time and, and you just keep like you fail. You feel like you're failing all the time and, and that you're failing because you've done so much wrong and you just add up all of your bad. The grace of God is what makes your heart pure. You don't make it pure. You work to keep it pure, but he makes it pure. So today, I'm just reminding you, God is bigger than your bad. I don't know that I've ever been affected, even by family, by this death like I've been affected this week. I can't explain it. I've had people much closer to me pass. But this just... And I'm going to tell you, the enemy is a liar. He did not win with my buddy Greg. And by everything we can do here at True Life, he's not going to win with you. God's going to win. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes, please? Maybe you're here today and you just keep putting off, putting off, putting off. This life is short, folks. It really is. We none have guarantees. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, and you would like to today, would you just lift your hand real quick? I want to pray for you. Anybody at all. If you're here today, and you're struggling with, you don't know my bad, and you constantly condemn yourself, because you don't think you measure up. And you say, that's me today, Pastor. Could you pray for me? Would you lift your hand? Amen, 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 amen. I'm gonna pray over you in just a moment, Pastor Amanda's coming out. She's got some instructions and she's gonna also pray a blessing over you. Father, I pray for those that lifted their hands or those that needed to. Lord, your grace, you said, is sufficient. And when it comes to purity, Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you in heaven. I want to see my friend. But I also want to see you here, Lord. I want to see you in other people. I want to see you in nature. I want to see you, God, when I open the word. Not just read words, but see you in the word. I want to apprehend you, God. I, 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 want to, I want to understand. So, Lord, I just speak grace over each and every person, God, that lifted their hands. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Perry. Come on, did you guys enjoy that message this morning? Can we just give it up for Pastor Perry? So good. Have you guys enjoyed this series on the Beatitudes? Come on. Can you just make some noise? It's been, it's been such a great series, and I don't know about you, but I've read through the Beatitudes many times over the years, and um, I've learned a lot of new things. I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot of new things that I did not know and, and helping me to understand them better, so I'm really appreciative of that. It's been really great. And just a few minutes... 
We're going to give you an opportunity to come to the front if you have um, a prayer need of any kind and you would like someone to agree with you. Our prayer team is going to be down here available for you. But first, I have just a few things I want to remind you of. And first, our connection card, you'll find these in the seat pockets right there in front of you. This is the best way for us to connect with you. It's the best way for us to help you take those next steps. Um, you can write a prayer need if you have one right here on the card. Also, if you uh, need more information on something in our church, something that's happening, if you want to connect with someone in our church, um, if you made a fresh commitment to Jesus this morning, we are celebrating with you. Uh, we want to hear from you. And if this is your first time visiting with us today, we're so glad that you decided to check us out. So we want to hear from you. We would love for you to fill one of these out. And then you can drop it off in one of the kiosks on your way out in the lobby. If you don't want to write anything and you prefer a digital option, we have that for you too in our True Life Church app. And then if you're watching us from home right now online, you have your very own link that you can click on and it'll take you right to it. Um, also, if you feel led to give this morning, you can do that here in person. Those envelopes are right there in front of you, and you can drop those off on your way out, or we have the digital option again. And then once again, if you're watching online, uh, there is a link uh, just for you to click on uh, for you to give. And then finally, you heard my husband mention at the beginning of service, it is the fifth Sunday of the month, so that means there is no life track tonight. So do not come for life track tonight because we will not be here to meet with you. But next week, the first Sunday of November, we will be picking back up with step one, and we'd love to see you here at 5 p.m. Um, I'm going to pray over all of you, and once I finish praying, uh, you are officially dismissed. And you can feel free to stay as long as you want. And then as I pray, prayer team, you can go ahead and make your way to the front. Would you go ahead and stand with me while we pray and conclude the service? Lord, we love you so much. And we thank you so much for your word this morning, Lord. God, as we live in a world that is full of so many impure things, Lord, would you help us to have a pure heart? God, make us pure. Make us pure in every aspect of our lives, Lord, like you, God, so that we can see you, so that we can really see you in everything, everywhere. God, we can know you, Lord. Make us pure. God, give us pure hearts in Jesus' name. Lord, would you bless our church as they go out those doors today, God? I pray blessing and favor over them, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We pray all this in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless all of you.
So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name. This is. 